Hi guys, Rhonda Draculas here, RK3 Designs, and we're going to do my favorite color again, turquoise. I constantly have people asking me for more turquoise patterns. Got some of my very favorite colors, and usually I do start my boards off, uh, paint and prime them with bare paint and primer in one. But I've had a lot of people ask me, can I use other products? Do I have to use that? Um, maybe they are retailers for paint or they're craft uh, enthusiasts and they do a lot of furniture. Uh, I know furniture um, finishers, they, a lot of times they'll use a chalk top paint. Uh, I, I do that actually and I love Dixie Belle paint. Uh, it's a great adhesion. It's just an all around great paint. Now, in saying that, it is a little more porous than uh, say the latex bare paint that you're gonna use. So in order to kind of compensate for that so that your epoxy uh, kind of glides over and does it uh, be absorbed by that, that, those porous um, finishes, I like to go over the top with a product called Final Coat. This is a fabulous product. Uh, very, so easy to use. I use it on all my furniture. I use it as a resist between layers. If I need um, something between my paint layers, say if I'm uh, maybe wet distressing or something and I need a resist, I'll use this. I also use it as a final coat, hence the name, final coat, um, on my pieces uh, when I'm done painting them. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna use um, sea foam is the color, I believe this, and I'll double check that. Uh, and it's by Dixie Bell. I've put two coats of the Dixie Bell down here on my prepped MDF board. Now, if you're gonna go over a uh, shiny surface, Dixie Bell has a fabulous product uh, called Slick Stick, and it's made, it's a bonding primer. Also, Stone Coat Countertop has a great bonding uh, primer, which I use a lot on, um, on countertops if I'm going over existing tops. And then also XIM bonding primer is fabulous. I use it on cabinets, I use it on tabletops, I use it on furniture. Uh, it is a fabulous product. So I'm gonna start off real quick with my final coat. And final coat comes in two different sheens. It comes in a regular sheen, which is a step down from, I would say a semi-gloss, maybe a, maybe an eggshell finish. Uh, but you can build that up by just applying more coats. And literally, this is all you're gonna put on your sponge. And this is just a little foam sponge. I don't even know where I got it. So, and I'm just gonna very lightly go over the top. Actually, I'm gonna put a little bit more. This is a brand new sponge. Usually I like to maybe mist the sponge just a hair. Just to kind of get it moist. Now, there we go. And I'm just gonna very lightly go over the top. And all this is doing is giving me a barrier between my, my chalk paint, chalk type paint, and my epoxy. Now, if you, uh, I've actually done this with Dixie Belle and not, not used the final coat and it does well, it does really good. Now, if you use a paint um, that's a true mineral paint, uh, you'll definitely wanna put some sort of uh, sealer on there because that is a very, very uh, porous paint. Fabulous paint, I use DIY, Debbie's DIY paint. Love the paint, love it, love it, love it. But it is very porous, so you definitely would want to do this step. Okay, so literally, it's drying, but I really wanna make sure it's very, very dry before we go on to the next step. So I'm gonna let it dry for just a little bit and I'll be right back. I'm going to add just a tiny bit, and I mean a very tiny bit of the gold dust to my clear. I don't want the gold dust to be overpowering. I literally want it just to be the uh, background so that my eye just barely has a hint when I look at it. And then I'm gonna separate just a little bit of clear out. And I'll use that in here in just a minute. All right, 
So I'm going to pre-fog my board and I'm going to go to the dark copper right now. And all I'm doing now is just adding a little bit of depth and interest. And I'm literally just barely hitting this, guys. No reason, no rhyme to reason, no pattern. I'm just laying out some colors, addressing my edges. Even though this is very similar, this was Seaside, very similar to the color that I have down as my base coat, you're still gonna get some depth in there. You're still gonna get some contrast. Uh, this is Ocean Mist. Trying to get those edges. And then I want just a hint of the warm caramel. You ever have problems with your tops? And I literally just want a hint of this. That's why it was kind of high, because I don't want to see, I got a little spot right there, but that's okay. Well, you won't even be able to see that when you get the rest of your finish down. All right, so I have my base down. And now I'm gonna come back and just lay down my clear coat with a little of the mica in it. I'm gonna save myself just a little bit. All right, now for the little bit of clear that I left, I wanna create some veins but I, I want those veins to be very translucent. And because I'm putting it in the um, epoxy and I'm laying it down when the epoxy is still very fluid, they're not gonna stay hard lines. They're gonna kind of meld out and that's the look that I'm going for. You could at this point, if you have a large area and you wanted to trial out your epoxy you could definitely do that since this is just a sample board I'm just going to use my hands address my corners my edges all right you'll see how just by adding epoxy how it really makes that fogging that we did before really kind of gives it a depth, a real sense of depth to your work. All right, take my torch. Get out my bubbles. And then we're ready to start laying down some color. So I'm gonna take the epoxy that I put my um, dark copper is what I sprayed in here to tint. And now I'm just gonna kinda come over here and randomly do some veins. I want this very natural. I don't want anything man-made looking. So I'm not gonna do X's or circles. It's all gonna be very very organic. All right, now because like I said, the epoxy is just put on the board, we're gonna get a lot of movement with these veins. So they're not gonna stay really in a straight line. They're gonna really move and just be an afterthought in the background. All right, now I wanna bring in some mica colors. I'm gonna go with my copper mica, and I mix uh, a half a bag, which is a quarter ounce of the mica powder with six to eight ounces of 91% alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. So I'm just gonna lay some color down. This too is going to just be a background afterthought all of this is going to really meld into the, uh, the finish. 
So now I'm coming in with real teal. And some tropical turquoise. You notice I always start off the board. So I, if I have it set wrong, I don't get a shooting line across my piece. All right. So now I've kind of set up my background. You can see now my lines are starting to really move. They're starting to meld out and they will really create a neat background effect. So now I'm going to start laying down some actual veins. All right. I'm going to use a paint stick, which just gives me a little thicker edge. Uh, I like to use the little um, tongue depressors if I really want a tiny edge and I'll probably use that here too. Let's see, I'm going to start off with my warm caramel. I think I'm just going to kind of pick a, pick a vein, pick an area here. I want it to be natural. There we go. I'm just laying down some color. And then I'm going to come back with cinnamon. I love cinnamon and warm caramel together. They really do complement each other very well. And anytime I do a turquoise piece, I try to really kind of bring in this cinnamon color. So now I've got some color down and I want to bring in a little bit of a highlight color. So I'm going to add, this is when I'm going to use my little popsicle stick and I'm going to come in with khaki. Now khaki will react a lot like white. So you have to be very careful with it that you don't over, overdo it. And that's why I'm using a thin stick because I just want a happy little accent. Come in here and then I'm going to go up here just a little bit kind of come down. There we go. All right, so now I'm gonna take my heat gun and I'm gonna spread out these veins so I get more of a natural look. I really like to use my heat gun to move my epoxy. You can also use um, your torch. I feel like I just have a little more control when I use my heat gun. Now I want to take this one vein and I really want to spread it out because I don't want that to be my focal point vein. Um, I want more of my focal points to be here. So I'm going to take these pieces here and I'm really going to kind of bring them out so that they're not really my focal point but they're still back there. A little surface tension. Sometimes you'll get a little bit of surface tension with the alcohols. And all you have to do is touch it just a little bit with your hands, move it a little bit with your heat gun. All right. Okay, so I really like that. And if you'll notice my background veins, remember I told you they were gonna kind of fade out and become background noise? That's exactly what they've done. And I mean, I'll be honest with you, I really like this. I think I'm gonna add, I don't wanna add any more mica sparkles or anything, but I do wanna add a little bit of plain alcohol just to give my veins a little bit of character because that's going to cause, oh yeah, look at that. That's going to cause a little bit of fracturing. All right, guys, I really, I really like this. I think I'm going to call it a day. It's subtle. You have subtle veins. Uh, it, it's got just enough color to have contrast with your turquoise.
for watching. I appreciate it. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell for future notifications.